Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So, tonight's episode was uh, kind of a down episode, I would say. This tends to happen when you tape so much TV at one time. Uh, I think we had three wrestling matches throughout the entire show, uh, and one was a squash match, so... Not very good for keeping people entertained throughout the show. I mean, there was a lot of storytelling and building up for Bound for Glory, which is good because you obviously want to go into your biggest or second biggest pay-per-view of the year with good storylines. So, uh, I mean, kind of they were... They were kind of, um, I would say, promoting the Global Wrestling Network, which just came out two days ago. Uh, which, of course, a lot of people are crapping on because, of course, it has its issues when it first comes out. There's a couple bugs and things like that. People complaining about it not being secure and how they made it. It's, it's just more people complaining about impact. That, that's really what it boils down to. Everybody bitches and complains. They, there's more bitching and complaining than positive feedback from people. And I'm not just talking about the network. I'm just talking about the promotion in, in total and... For people that can sit back and accept WWE's product, whether it be great or crappy, they're always going to bash Impact. It's just the way it is. It doesn't matter how good or bad the product is. It's just a bashing. Um, and they also announced that they've made a deal with Pluto TV. I believe this actually happened maybe a month or so ago, but it's really just coming to fruition now that people are knowing about it that uh, on Pluto TV, which is a free television st internet station, I guess you would call it. it, they have it on Roku and PlayStation Network, and I believe uh, the Fire Stick has it as well. But it's uh, they got a 24-hour Impact Wrestling streaming channel, so I believe they're also showing like explosions on Friday night at 8. I believe those are up to date, but everything else is just from their library, randomly generated, um, like I said, 24 hours a day. But uh, to the Global Wrestling Network, it's I think they're calling it the alternative network to WWE's $9.99 a month as theirs is $7.99 a month. I believe they were originally going in at the $5.99 price point, but I'm guessing they decided that that wasn't a profitable number. Um, so amongst their library, which is available on the network... Uh, they also have some wrestling from the Smash Wrestling promotion and Border City Wrestling. I would assume in the future, since T uh, Impact... Jeez, I was going to call them TNA. Um, Impact has so many working um, business deals with other promotions that will get AAA on there. Uh, the Crash, Pro Wrestling Noah, which... If, if they continue to work with other promotion, promotions, I, I can't see this being a bad thing at all, just because it'll be an exposure for all these different promotions. And uh, like I said, I hope it's good things for Impact. Um, not, I want nothing but positive for this company, because I always want options. So anyway, back to Impact. We open the show with LAX coming out, and apparently they want to invoke their rematch clause at Bound for Glory. But guess what? We knew that last week. Uh, they call out OVE, and they challenge him to a 51-50 match. And uh, Dave Chris answers them and says, oh, we'll accept any challenge. We've, we've wrestled all over the place and in every type of match. We don't care. Um, at this point, I think it was Diamante said that, well, the thing about a 51-50 match is that you're not just fighting two people. You're fighting all the members of LAX. At this point, Dave pushed her, and then uh, LAX started beating the Chris brothers down. Uh, they hit Dave with a cutter through a couple of chairs or on top of chairs, and then threw Jake off the top rope through a table that's set up on the outside. So this is a good spot. Uh, glad they're building more toward this match. I think this is going to be the best match probably on the card. Um, and so now that the deck is stacked against OVE. Um, there's been rumors going on lately that there's a possibility of Sammy Callahan signing with Impact, which would be huge because this is a big name in the indies that would do nothing but positive things for the promotion. 
and they've he's worked with uh ov a lot in the independence and i believe there is another chris sibling um i don't know her name but getting her in would be a good equalizer as well because that would make it four on four so like i said that this ma that this episode was a lot of storytelling and backstage stuff so up next we go to we take a look at the impact wrestling stars in the pro wrestling noah promotion where they had invaded japan um they were basically talking about i think eli drake and garza jr was there and eddie edwards who was the ghc i believe heavyweight champion um then we get more from the Lashley and Moose feud. Well, actually, we don't get more. We just get a recap of the things that happened the past couple weeks. So I don't care about this feud, to be honest. So I, like I said, I would assume a match would happen at Bound for Glory. But I just want it done and over with. I, I, American Top Team doesn't do anything for me. Hopefully it's doing something for Impact Wrestling. But uh, yeah. So up next, we got... Uh, Rosemary versus Hannah Harper. This was a complete squash match um, with Rosemary winning with the Red Wedding. But that wasn't the reason that this match happened. Because after the match, Rosemary grabs a microphone and says that she wants a formidable opponent and calls out Taya Valkyrie. So Taya comes out. They get face-to-face. -face. Rosemary goes to strike, and Taya spits a red mist into her face. Um, and then hits the road to Van Valhalla. So I like this segment just because you got her in the ring and you got a segment out of it rather than having one or the other. So I'm pretty sure we're getting a match or definitely getting a match at Bound for Glory here. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. <sighs> then we get more from Moose. He's apparently going back to American Top Team headquarters, and he is getting back up. That brings us back to the Impact Zone, where uh, Taryn Terrell comes out, and she kind of runs down Gail Kim and says that she's excited for her championship match at Bound for Glory, the Fatal 4-Way women's match with Gail Kim, Taryn Terrell, Sienna, and Allie. Uh, Gail comes out, and she tells Taryn that, you know, her mind games aren't going to work against her, and that... She believes in karma, and karma is going to slap her in the face before I get the chance to. Then she says, on second thought, and slaps Taryn. Gail gets the upper hand. They fight in the ring, and Taryn runs away. Just more build to the match, and they've had something going on since uh, Destination X when Taryn returned. Then we get a return promo. I should say a promo of the return of Alberto El Patron. So apparently he's going to be back from Bound for Glory. Uh, should be interested to see where they input him into the storylines. Um, he was the, their previous champion, so I don't know if they're just going to throw him right into there or they're going to build him back up with somebody else. Um, backstage we go with Mackenzie, and she is talking with Sienna, Caleb Conley, and Tejano about their match tonight against Ali, James Storm, and Desmond Xavier, who we haven't seen since... Destination X back in August. Um, but yeah, the heels basically say they're going to win the match. Not much here. It's a pretty quick backstage segment. Um, so we go outside where uh, Grado is basically reeled over in some sort of discomfort and looks completely exhausted. Um, Joseph Park comes driving in in a Mustang with a bunch of women. Uh, they get out of the car and... One of the women go up to Grado and go, oh, he's cute. Is he our meal ticket? And Grado's like, meal ticket? What are you talking about? So Grado seemed really pissed. And again, like I said last week, I'm expecting a match at Bound for Glory. Don't know what Joseph Park will get, but we'll see. Up next, we have the six-person tag I talked about earlier with uh, Sienna, Caleb Conley, and Tano versus Ali, Desmond Xavier, and James Storm. Don't know why they're not using Desmond Xavier more than they are. I don't know if he had other um, engagement, prior engagements that he was dealing with. I think he was in the Bola and a couple other things. So I'm sure he's been busy. Um, but yeah, the heels dominated most of this match. Um, Trevor Lee was outside with Caleb Conley, and he interjected himself a couple times into the match. But ultimately, James Storm hit 
Caleb Conley with a super kick for the win. Then we go back to Pro Wrestling Noah and get some more highlights from the show. Um, and then we got Global Forged episode number five. Don't know what their end game here is. Um, I feel like this should have just been a strictly internet thing, but I guess really they don't do much but promote it here. So I guess that's all it is. So we go back to LAX's hideout. Actually, we go there for the first time. Um, and they basically say that OVE has no idea what they've gotten themselves into since they're just, they, they accepted any type of match. And apparently Homicide will be back at Bound for Glory. So we continue the Moose and American Top Team interaction where he shows up at the headquarters with UFC legend Stefan Bonner. They uh, both have pipes in hand, and that's all we see at that point. So that brings us to the main event of Johnny Impact versus Garza Jr. with the winner facing Eli Drake at Bound for Glory. Uh, throughout the match, they say that after the match happens, we're going to get the outcome of of Moose and Bonner at American Top Team. So, yeah. But uh, this was a fun match. Not really a huge surprise here between Garza and Impact because they're both very good wrestlers and uh, both put on a good show. Uh, a lot of high-flying stuff and counters and things like that. But ultimately, Johnny Impact wins the match. I don't think this was a surprise to many people. Uh, they exchanged back and forth, rolling up each other, and Johnny got the upper hand and rolled up Garza for the win. So after the match, Cornette comes out and interviews Impact. Impact runs down Eli Drake, uh, calling him a meathead, I believe. And at that point, Chris Adonis comes out with a sheet of wood, hits Impact right over the head with it, and lays him out. And that was it from the Impact Zone. After that, we go back to American Top Team headquarters. Uh, Moose and Bonner are looking for Lashley and Lambert. Neither of them are there. They've all gone home for the night. So they decide to wreck the place and take the championship belts that were on display. They're really uh, really pushing this. Um, and it's kind of been a secondary feud, so I, I don't know why they've put it. We had, I think, at least three or four segments of it. So I, I don't know why. I'm hoping Impact is gaining something from this with uh, from American Top Team. That's, that's all I hope for. But like I said in the beginning, this really wasn't a huge episode for, for a lot going on. I mean, like I said, some storytelling and building to matches at Bound for Glory, which uh, I believe is three weeks away or so. But uh, yeah, I'm still looking forward to Bound for Glory. Going to be some good matches. And I would assume at some point we'll get an X Division match. Hopefully the ultimate X match like I suggested last week. And uh, yeah, so that was my Impact Wrestling review. If you like what you've seen here, please like, share, and subscribe.